Well, hello, and welcome to the Saturday edition of the RFES Bedtime Story. We've got a great one for you. As we approach Halloween, this one is called The Luck of the Loch Ness Monster. And it's a tale of picky eating. You might say, first of all, Mr. Olden, what is the Loch Ness Monster? Second of all, what would a monster have to do with picky eating? Well, the second question you're going to have to answer as we read the story. Um, but the Loch Ness Monster is a monster that nobody has verified is actually true, and it lives in a lake in Scotland. But people have claimed to see it year after year after year, and they, they are absolutely 100% certain that it's real. Now I want you to think about picky eating. Are you a picky eater? What is one thing that you would leave on your plate for a thousand years and would not want to eat? Think about it in your head. All right, now, think about a rule you have with eating in your house. Do you guys have a rule like the one bite rule? Do you know what that is? The one bite rule is apparently you need to try a bite and then decide if you like it or don't like it. Do you have that rule in your house? Well, we used to have that. I used to have to eat, I think, like five or ten bites. But you might have the one bite rule. Well, let's see what the Loch Ness Monster, mm, the world it has to do with picky eating. This is a story written by A.W. Flaherty. And the illustrations are by Scott Magoon. Let's enjoy it. Once upon a time, a little girl named Katerina Elizabeth took an ocean liner to visit her grandmother in Scotland. It was the first time in her life she had traveled all by herself. Her parents had thoughtfully planned every step of her trip for her, even her meals. So for breakfast the first day, Katerina Elizabeth found a bowl of gray, gooey oatmeal, her least favorite food in the world. Her parents always told her that without oatmeal, she would grow up stunted, which means that she, would, that she wouldn't grow anymore. She decided not to eat it, but she actually threw it out the porthole of the ship. Well, yes, the oatmeal sank in a lump down to the bottom of the sea. By luck, it landed next to a tiny sea worm, no bigger around than a thread, and no longer than your thumbnail. The sea worm had never seen sub anything just quite as lovely as this oatmeal. So it gobbled. What do you think is going to happen? Think about it. And it gobbled, and it ate, and it ate. And by the time it finished, it was as thick as a yarn and as long as your hand. That's actual size, by the way, on the book. Here's my hand, so it's almost as big as my hand. And it decided to follow this ship that had given it the oatmeal. The next morning, Katerina Elizabeth watched the other diners enjoying cinnamon rolls with icing. But for Katerina Elizabeth, as she watched them enjoy their delicious cinnamon rolls, it was nothing but oatmeal once again. So, she threw it out the porthole, and she grabbed herself a cinnamon roll. Well, you can imagine what happened next. The oatmeal sank like lead. The worm gobbled it up. It grew even larger, and it was as long as your whole body. It says not actual size now. Then, it swallowed the bowl, too. Katerina Elizabeth found, sadly that her parents had ordered oatmeal for her every single day for breakfast. Soon, the delighted worm learned to swim right under the porthole at breakfast and to catch her oatmeal before it even hit the water right in midair. The worm surprised Katerina Elizabeth the first time that she saw it. She especially did not like snaky type things. So she began to quickly change her mind, however, when she realized how quickly the worm was learning tricks. When the ship reached the country of Scotland, it continued up the River Ness to Loch Ness, and the worm followed. Katerina Elizabeth was glad to escape the boat to stay with her grandmother, who had been born in the Ukraine and did not know how to make oatmeal. <laughs> so for that, she was grateful. But somebody was sad. The worm. Mr. Oatmeal and missed her too. He was anxious to find more oatmeal, so the worm circled Loch Ness, 
Luckily, oatmeal is the national breakfast food of Scotland, as many Scottish children don't like it, just like some American ones do. And all along the lake the next morning, the worm heard the plop of oatmeal being hurled by children all over Scotland, out the window, out of their thatched cottages, and right into the lake. And well, all that summer, the sea worm, who was now a lake worm, made morning rounds of the lake to salvage the children's oatmeal. After a few months, a child leaving her house very early one morning saw the worm plowing through the water. Hey, a monster, she shouted. The worm was about to politely correct the child, but first looked at its reflection in the water. The worm saw that it had changed a great deal since its first bite of oatmeal. What had happened? It was now as thick as an elephant's belly, as long as the main hall of Rogers Forge Elementary School. It had sleek scales, an imposing row of fins down its back, and white teeth that were quite sharp, perhaps because nothing tougher than oatmeal had ever worn them down. <laughs> well, the worm, who is now the monster, was thrilled with its home in not Loch Ness. It found that there were other Scottish foods that children often tossed in the lake, such as a national dish called haggis and a special kind of pudding. It grew fond of them, too. Well, the monster was really lucky that it loved Loch Ness, because by then, it was really too big for it to swim back down the river and get back to the sea. Sometimes, though, the monster worried about the future. What if all of these children grew up and moved away? What would happen next? Being an American worm, however, it knew the usefulness of advertising, and occasionally it allowed itself to be seen at dawn. Soon tourists flocked to Loch Ness. Many rode the morning tour boats, hoping to see Nessie, and while waiting, they would order the national dish, oatmeal, and after a few bites, you guessed it, they would toss it overboard. At the end of Nessie's first summer, the most famous Loch Ness monster sighting occurred as a big ship was leaving for America. To the amazement of all, the monster rose from the deep, arched its neck, and kissed a small American child named Katerina Elizabeth right on the nose, while everybody around it panicked. Despite her parents' warning about the importance of oatmeal, somehow, some way, Katerina Elizabeth was able to live happily ever after. <laughs> and that is the story, The Luck of the Loch Ness Monster. So you think, true or not? And that is our Saturday bedtime story. I certainly hope you're having a great weekend. This book was written by A.W. Flaherty and, and illustrated by Scott Magoon. I hope you're getting a chance to get outside. I know it rained a little bit today, but it was a nice day to be out. Still very warm out. And I hope you enjoy your last weekend day tomorrow. And I really hope I see you back tomorrow night for our Sunday edition of the RFES Bedtime Story. And I hope you have a good night's sleep.